Hello friends, welcome to this introductory series on Salesforce Marketing Automation. As part of this series, we will cover a few of the automation tools within Salesforce Marketing Cloud, such as Automation Studio and Journey Builder. So many of you have heard of Marketing Cloud, right? But probably you didn't get a chance to work on it because there's no free developer work or like a demo work that you can try your hands on. Uh, especially like when you're preparing for certification exams such as email specialist or marketing cloud consultant, right? So hopefully this series will give you a good idea on like how some of these tools work and how you can leverage them for various use cases in the marketing area. Uh, please note that we won't be covering list or data extensions uh, and the marketing cloud data model in this series. So if you're unfamiliar with the same, please do go through those uh, in the marketing cloud uh, data model in Trailhead. Uh, especially data extensions. We'll be referring to data extensions uh, quite a lot in, in these um, uh, series. Okay. Uh, if you do wish to see a series on the Marketing Cloud Data Model uh, in future, please do leave your feedback and I'll try to get uh, a few videos up, up and running in future. Okay. So with that, let's get started. Um, so this is how the Marketing Cloud dashboard looks like once you log in. Um, and then at the top, you will see the various studios and the builders uh, that's available based on your subscription. And the what we'll primarily be focusing on for our series is under here, under Journey Builder, you will see the two main automation tools that we commonly use across all the different channels. Uh, it's like Automation Studio and Journey Builder. Okay, so the first part of the series, uh, we will, will be concentrating on Automation Studio. And then in future, we'll have a set of videos for Journey Builder as well. Okay, so going into Automation Studio, uh, it's primarily just has two tabs. It's one is the overview and the other one is the activities. So overview tab is primarily like where you will actually see all the, the various automations that we have configured uh, and then like, you know, what's the progress, which is the ones that have been run the last um, and when it, what's the progress on these, if there's any errors, you would actually see them on here. Okay. And then you will probably have your folder structures and you can actually have automations like, you know, created and labeled under the various folder structures that you would wish to create. Uh, when you want to create a new automation, you just come click here and then you can actually define the workflow. Uh, and as you can see here, the left side, you'll see the diff different uh, you know, configuration options that you have for you know, the automation workflow. Uh, you have the starting sources, which are the schedule and the file drop. And then you have a bunch of activities that you can actually do uh, as you configure uh, the automation, right? So as you drag and drop, like, you know, you can see, like, you know, there's actually, you know, it actually builds the, the different uh, parts of the workflow. So these are all the different building blocks that you have uh, within uh, within the Automation Studio workflow, right? And then the starting sources is like you have to choose one of these two, like either the schedule or the file drop. Now don't get alarmed like you know, when I'm going through these right now because we will have future videos with each uh, where we will go into each of these ones in detail and I will explain like you know when to use what starting source and what the different activities and how to use them in your workflow, okay? The second tab is primarily, uh, let me just say, uh, discard that okay the second part here is the activities uh, where you know some of the activities that we saw earlier those small building blocks so here are the common ones that you would have and then you can actually go ahead and define these activities like if you have uh, something that you want like import a file uh, you can actually create uh, the definitions for each of those so that you can reuse them in your automation workflow right uh, let's say if you wanted to like import products multiple times like you know um, so every time you want to like you know create a different automation that actually um, in includes like importing of the products details then you can you can just you know create that one time and then you can have it referenced multiple times in your automation similarly like you have file transfers data extract sql query filter and script activities now in the automation uh, uh, workflow you will see that there's a bunch more uh, different types of activities available depending upon your subscription but the ones that we saw in the activities tab are the, the major ones that you primarily use uh, for your automation workflows so we still can use the other ones in your workflow and we'll go through a few of those uh, later in, in in our series as well okay so that's just a high level overview of like uh, what automation studio is uh, in the next few videos we'll look at uh, the entry sources in detail uh, as well as uh, some of these common activities that you see here and then a, a few examples of how do you actually like use them uh, in a full end-to-end -end, uh, automation workflow hope you enjoyed the content and thank you for watching